week number 6 and lecture number 3 hello friends so now we are basically talking about death and then thereafter the effect of death and that is the bereavement we must understand one thing that life is like this we are not immortals we are just mortals we come and we have to go there is no doubt about it whoever takes a birth he or she has to die because that's a system that is our life and that we need to accept life is like a kite 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 in the sky what is the life of that kite in the sky and how much far how much farther it can go maybe somewhere one day two days somebody will cut that kite also so this is how it happens a kite is being cut by somebody else some competitor whereas life gets cut gets shortened by almighty or whatever the reason maybe whatever you understand it you know in hindi the same way there is a very good shayari patang si hai zindagi patang si hai zindagi kahan tak jayegi patang si hai zindagi kahan tak jayegi patang ho ya umra ek na ek din kat hi jayegi patang ho ya umra ek na ek din kat hi jayegi so if this is this life then the best way is just to accept it you know but however some of us do not accept and that is where the issue of bereavement and grief comes in the objective of this lesson is to understand stages of grief by various models to recognize and assess the common reaction of grief and its effect on health of carers to find out the factors which make complicated grief to find out vulnerable groups in which bereavement becomes difficult to face like children and elderly people and to understand principles of bereavement support and role of palliative care in it what is bereavement bereavement is the process of adjusting to the death of a loved one so it comes immediately after the death when a, a human being when a person tries to adjust to that particular shock and what is a grief grief is a normal psychological response to the death normal psychological response to the death or other major loss that one has during the bereavement process so this is the difference between bereavement and grief bereavement is the process of adjustment whereas grief is a psychological response and that generally occurs during the process of bereavement what is bereavement now earlier you see the palliative care people believe that it is just end of life treatment you no know? so that myth is gone we start giving palliative care treatment as soon as the sickness starts sickness sickness starts here at the point of diagnosis so here onwards you can see the palliative treatment has started somewhere in between the dying process if that disease is like this that it is not curable we are giving curative cure we are trying but a time comes when we understand that curative cure is just not possible so at the same time we start palliative care which is symptom oriented pain management oriented supportive care we call it and dying process is somewhere here it starts between this dying process is generally like this 
and when nothing can happen after all we are not god doctors are not god one has to go so the time come it is here when the death occurs there after because of shock because of the loss of the loved one the grief and bereavement starts now we have said it time and again that palliative care is totally different from other medicine streams other medical field of modern medicine they stop treatment here only when the death occurs and their only job is just to sign the death certificate and that's the end of it but my dear friends no in palliative care we continue and now our focus is on the family members the caregivers and that is where we take part in the bereavement process or the grief process which may last for a few days altogether we remain with them our principle is be with them when they need us so this is where after death bereavement process comes till they accept reality and what is the reality whoever has come to this planet sometime he or she has to leave the planet if there is a birth there is always a death also when this acceptance this feeling comes into our mind then thereafter okay fine that is what god wanted it after all the deceased person had lived his life why to grieve so much now and then show carry on here also the person you see diagnosis to dying to death person is with illness the family is from here person with illness remains with us till death palliative care is being provided but the family and the caregivers from the diagnosis to the end of bereavement process they remain with the palliative care specialist so that is where the palliative care can go this is what the start of bereavement and the process of palliative care specialist what they do stages of grief uh, we call it dabda uh this is basically rose model we'll have a separate lecture on this rose rose was a doctor and she found out ki a grief process goes through five stages first comes immediately when the death occurs the near ones the loved ones the close family members say ki no no theek hai it's fine he has died she has died i am not really grieving it has happened i have accepted it this is the denial stage grief is there that shock is still there but as a human being as a person they say they deny it no i am okay it has it had to happen so it just happened but slowly and slowly maybe in couple of hours the denial turns into anger why is this happening why the life is so unfair why he left me and i am all alone now he has gone and nobody is there to look after me and therefore that person starts getting angry he gets angry because he doesn't understand the whole process he is not ready to accept that yes, it had to happen at some stage he had to go he had to die but he doesn't want to accept so when you don't accept a thing you get angry so that is the second stage of anger then maybe after few hours you start bargaining okay i had to do anything to change things please just name it and i'll do it keep if he can come back i am ready to give we in our tradition we say to that extent ki i'll give my years of life balance years of my life if we can we can call him back from heavenly about but it just cannot happen starts by bargaining with god 
God doesn't listen because this is also not in his power. Once a person is gone, but the person is died, God, I'm just saying it because I haven't seen any evidence or proof, but I'm saying it, whoever has died has never returned. So when the person doesn't come back, the depression, life is hopeless. My God, just see, he is gone. I'm trying, I'm requesting God to send him back. I'm giving my ears also. But the person is not coming back. Depression goes on for a few days. Depends on the strength, mental strength of that person. It may go on for a few days, few weeks, month, maybe a month, two months. Finally, the beautiful stage of acceptance starts. Yes, nothing can be done. The person is dead. He just cannot come back. I still have to live my life for the sake of others, for the sake of children, for the sake of anybody. And for that, I must accept it. And he will also want me to do my job. This is my responsibility. Up in the heaven also will think ki in his or her absence, I will do my duties perfectly, 100% and I must go on. So this is the stage of acceptance. Five stages. You deny first, you get angry, start bargaining with the God or with the system, whatever it may be. When things do not happen the way you want it, you get depressed and then finally, normally what happens when the child gets too tired, child is crying this and that, he wants a particular toy and the mother is unable to get a toy. For one hour or two hours, child will cry, lots of tears in the eyes and finally he will get tired and he will go to sleep. Peace of mind. Similarly here also, a person tries, gets anger, goes under depression, maybe crying, but nothing happens, so he just accepts the fate. Reaction of loss, physical loss, physical reactions, hollowness in stomach, headache, shortness of breath, weakness in muscles, oversensitivity to noise, dry mouth, you can't, you can't speak sometimes, loss of appetite, you don't, no hunger at all, illness, sleep disturbances, you can't sleep, increased use of medicines, alcohol on tobacco, because these are the things generally it is being felt that such things, they relieve your tension. So you drink, you smoke and other things. These are basically physical things which can be visible, visibly seen on those people who are under grief. Emotional, shock and numbness, feeling of anger, guilt. Guilt comes in when, oh, I could have really, it was the time that I would have done lots of seva to him or her when he was sick, you know, lots of service, but I couldn't do it because I was busy with my work. So that sort of guilt, we already spoke about guilt and regrets in earlier lessons. Loneliness, loss of enjoyment, anxiety, depression and relief. Reaction of loss, behavioral loss, Crying, absent-mindedness, restlessness, social withdrawal, you don't speak to anybody, you remain just aloof in your own room, change of home, you leave one home, you go to another home, change your residence and sometimes if behavioral reaction is too, too extreme and you are too weak, then suicidal thoughts, okay, without him or without her, how am I going to live, what is the use of this life? This generally happens when the people are very close. It happens generally between wife, husbands, lovers or the very much loved children if they die. This, is, this can happen to this particular behavior can take place in the mind of mother or father or something like that, you know. Suicide thoughts because without him or her life is nothing. Attitudes. Low self-esteem, hopelessness, suspicion, doubting others because things couldn't be improved by anybody including specialist doctors also, nurses also. After spending lots of money in modern hospitals, nothing could be done. So 
suspicion starts around. Having a sense of the presence of the deceased, preoccupied with thoughts of the deceased, search for meaning and purpose of life. You keep thinking about your loved one. Effects of these reactions on health predisposes people to physical and mental illness. If you do not stop, do not control these reactions, then you might get into the crutches of physical and mental illness. Risk of cardiac events exasperates existing illness and health threatening behavior such as smoking, drinking and drug abuse and may lead to depression finally. When bereavement becomes difficult, mode of death, untimely, unexpected death which causes more severe and prolonged grief, untimely, a child dies, you know, or a husband dies in an accident. So such things, they are very cruel. And this is what you just can't understand, can't take it in. And therefore, your grief is severe. Nature of relationship, very close. Your own son, own daughter, own sister, something like that, you know. The unavailability of quality supportive network. Dr. Gita Joshi earlier told you that supportive network is very much required in our life to manage our stress and to manage this condition, this type of condition. You must have some friends, somebody in your support group, somebody maybe from your family, own family, to whom you can speak to anything, anytime. You need to burst that bubble of pressure. And therefore, those support people will come into actions. Concurrent stress because of family problems when somebody dies and particularly the, that person is the only earning member of the family. So income is gone and when no income, financial burden, unemployment. Previous losses, earlier also in the family people have lost lives and frequently we are losing the lives of our own family members. Habit of alcohol, smoking, suicidal behavior in carriers and personality. Some people are meek by personality, very, very soft, emotionally not stable. In whom bereavement becomes difficult? Basically children because and particularly small children, they do not know what is life. They just don't know, they do not understand that one has come here and one has to go. No, they haven't seen the life. So when they find somebody, some important member of the family is missing, they really don't know. And other people, elders, they cannot answer in correct form. Then confuse elderly and those with learning difficulties, repeated explanation and supported enrollment in important events such as the funeral have been shown to reduce repetitive questions by confused elderly parents. Professional help can be given, non-judgmental non listening, encourage talking about the disease and expression of feeling. Non-judgmental, just keep listening to the people who are in the grieving process. Let them speak whatever they want to speak. Encourage talking, let them talk, talk, talk. Like in our society, we have a system of crying and if a person is not crying, if a husband has died and wife is not crying, we are hiring people who are crying and who will make her cry. In fact, there is a movie, there was an old movie called Rudali. This is the system of our society. I don't like that particular system, you know. The crying is being imposed on the wife because the husband has died and she's supposed to cry in grief in the morning period. Morning period lasts for about a month. Shok chisko bolte, viyog hum bolte hain. So that period. Anticipatory guidance, this is what is required. Anticipatory guidance means we know 
that this person is not going to survive. Doctors will tell us prognostication. We know there is diagnosis and then prognosis. Means what is going to happen about this disease? This disease will it be cured or it will not be cured? If it will not be cured, and uh, when the end is going to come. So that's not a precise thing, but yes, generally it is true. So anticipatory guidance can be given to the people around that this case is not going to be right now. It will deteriorate further and it cannot be cured. And finally, it is leading to the final stage and that is death. So people will start accepting slowly and slowly and thus the shock effect will be lessened when actually the death occurs. Being there for them, you should be there with them. Because even your presence matters there. Yes, these are my friends. They are here in support. Remain silent. You don't have to say anything at all. Sometimes you can just help them around. Don't have to utter a single word. If they say something, help them, help them. Otherwise, just stay there in some corner. Sit down there. But be there. Your presence will matter hell of a lot and the tension of death will come down. Providing information and requested regarding ill, death and how to register a death. Somebody will do this, all these things in the society. This I have seen number of times when my friends and close relatives dying. There are people all around. They have got the experience also of doing such thing. Where to register, where to take him, the cremation. Crematorium grounds, smashan gri. So this is all will help. When to give help? When he or she cries more for long period, like more than one year. This is too much. For one whole year, one is in a grieving process. That means they don't want to forget the disease. They want to just keep him in keep in his mind, in his memory, alive. So it is not good. That final stage of grief was what? Acceptance. It had not been accepted, the reality had not been accepted, it is not good. It will bring that person under depression. The intense emotions are not subsiding crying, crying, not talking to anybody, sitting in just one corner, on one chair only, not cooking, nothing. I mean to say, she or he had just gone like a sort of, you know, dead body. The body is there, but it is not working. No motions, no emotions, nothing. Not sleeping. And in such a case, relationships are suffering and they become accident prone. What will happen? We do not know at all. If it goes out, might get accidental death. So in such cases, it is necessary to provide help by the family members and others. If not, then we can get some professional help also, some psychologist or counselors. Role of parity care. The general lack of understanding and social pressure try to keep bereaved persons feeling private. So bereaved people may feel isolated and find it hard to seek help. They don't seek help because they become very private. Professional support is offered to bereaved people without asking for help if this is what taking treatment under palliative care service. If palliative care treatment was being given by some clinic, palliative care services, community community-based palliative care centers or hospice or anything. So naturally these people will give, it's a part of our palliative care system. They will give this treatment of bereavement support. But not, then also you can go and request these professional people to come for your help. Support from volunteers who have been provided with training, supervision and backup from suitably qualified professionals. Counselors, role of counselors is really good. But unluckily we do not to have given that role to the counsellors. We think what is the use of it? As an elderly per person, I can give correct advice. Why to hire a counsellor? But we just forget one fact that these counsellors have been trained scientifically. They have got a system of counselling, the ways and means of counselling properly. And they will 
get they will derive great benefits if you hire them so in the end my dear friends it is better that if we accept the reality as early as possible but at the same time there are people who are not mentally very very strong they cannot take up that thing i give you my own case in the i said i was in the army and way back in 2002 we are about to fight the war with pakistan when late prime minister atal bihari bajpayee was there and we are deployed on borders at that time i was posted in a research laboratory in dehradun and all of a sudden i got a call i was recalled to join the border forces the day i was to leave dehradun i got a telephonic message that my mother is no more old aged more than 80 years old on the same day i got the message but i could not do anything at all but i had to catch a train i caught a train and then went to ahmednagar reported on duty and after few days i told my officer in charge that this is the problem my mother is no more but i couldn't tell you earlier because i i can't as a senior officer give such a reason that i want to go home when i am supposed to go and join the border forces then thereafter on 10th or 11th i got leave and i went back and attended the full rights you know so this is what happens you need to understand the situation but again i told you it requires very strong and logical mind and everybody cannot do it we need to keep our attention to the diverse expression of normal and healthy grieving normal and healthy grieving mine was normal and healthy grieving i just said i have got my own duty to perform i can't just go leave it half way and go and uh, attend to the bereavement process of my mother no i have to go report to my station first and then as and when i get time i'll go normal and healthy while continuing to recognize that grief can cause marked health changes in some in some individuals those individuals who have not learnt anything who are who do not know what is the death like who haven't gone to crematorium or a grave ground to bury or to cremate some people they they for them it's a first experience the new insights also highlights the limits to professional care and the need to create supportive environments in our communities for people living with loss as well as providing specialist medical and psych- psychological services in the final i'll just tell you that this is the theoretical thing uh what happens bereavement and grief but in society we are very strong society why don't we have so many psychologists with us because we generally do not require psychologists if something a major loss comes to us we just take it we have been taught in our childhood or by our parents that this is what god's willing god is doing this what can we do it you know if god is doing then nobody else can help us we surrender ourselves to god and and that is how such a big shock and depression and all those things do not occur to us do not come to us very very in rare cases that people do not come out of grief and take more time i have not seen anybody in my more than 70 years of life that people had gone to grieving process for more than one year they just become normal and they start leading a normal healthy life of course they keep remembering normally i remember my parents 
In fact, whenever I come out of my home, I always salute them. This is my remembrance, you know. So this is a process which we must understand and see this is what palliative care is doing and no other medical field. Thank you, friends.